And I've <clears throat> mentioned before how much we love the framework in Scripture that shows how God builds hope for lost humanity. The shadows of salvation we see in the Old Testament prepare us for the promise that's revealed in the new. That there is no wasted white space in the word. There isn't anything that's just kind of there taken up place. There's <clears throat> only prime real estate in scripture in all 66 books. There is no room for the insignificant. Every page matters. Every word has significance. Everything is there for a reason. Every law and lesson, every commandment and requirement, every festival and feast, every story and situation becomes a significant piece that forms the most majestic picture of God's promise of salvation to us all. You can find hope for whatever you're walking through right now when you turn to the word. No matter where you are in life, no matter how low the enemy may have brought you, can I just remind you that God has put somebody's story in scripture to remind you that God knows exactly where you are and you haven't got too far down for him to pick you up, that you haven't gone too far beyond for him to reach you and bring you back into his purpose and his plan. I, I just want to remind somebody that this word, that the Bible from the book beginning until the book end is a story of salvation. And God has a plan for this end time church to be actively involved, not just in keeping the saved, but in saving the lost. That God has a plan for the doors to be swung wide open. There isn't any intention. I'm grateful for the walls that hold the roof up. But these walls are not going to hold souls back from coming into the kingdom of God. This altar will be a place where lives are turned around. That baptismal will be a place where lives are washed clean this will be a house where the spirit of God rests and fills hearts and then when we leave these doors we go with a commission in our spirit to reach a world that's lost because God is a savior he came to seek and to save that which was lost so if his plan, if his design, if his focus is salvation, you would better be certain that the enemy of our soul is bent on destruction. He has a desire to do everything that he can to separate you from salvation. Every temptation is designed to separate you from salvation. Every failure that brings shame into your life is designed to separate you from salvation. But God still reaches. God still calls. God still beckons. God still invites. His voice still says, come. <laughs> no matter where we, where we would find ourselves on life's journey, God's door is open. He's still the Father standing on the balcony of heaven inviting you to come back into the fold. He's still the Father of the prodigal that stands and waits and looks on the horizon every single day for the one that comes to himself and turns back toward Father's house. He's still that God. He's still the one that finds the woman at the well who doesn't know where to turn. She's tried six husbands that the one that she's with now isn't her own. That woman still finds a Savior. No matter where you find yourself in life, he is the God of salvation. He is reaching. And the job of the church is to sit and celebrate salvation. Our job, well, that's part of it. But our duty and our requirement is that we share salvation. Thank you, Pastor Matt, for challenging us this morning. Thank you for reminding us that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for telling us to walk with boldness into the world that needs us. Thanks for reminding us. I, he kind of, he played this sermon down a little bit, but it was probably one of the best sermons I've heard in a long time. We are not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed because it's the power of God unto salvation. And in a world, come on, in a world that's looking for the powerful, we have the power. It's the power of God unto salvation. In chapter 4 of the Song of Solomon, we find the groom describing his bride. And he speaks about an untapped potential. Song of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 12, it says that, a garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. 
a sealed up, shut up, enclosed spouse is how he describes his bride. That there is this potential that has yet to be released. That there is this power that's waiting to flow. That there is something that's just kind of contained that's waiting for the doors to open and the walls to fall so that the world can see what what awaits it. I I just want to remind someone tonight that, that we've got some untapped potential. The enemy hasn't changed tactics in 2,000 or 4,000 or 6,000 years. He still has an intention to shut up the church. If he can put the walls up and ensure that we just keep, I, I, I'm getting a little bold, Pastor Matt, you got me fired up. But if he can be sure that he can kind of keep these walls in place and that we'll just keep what we've got right here. Can I come down for a little bit? If we'll just keep what we've got right here in the room, then he doesn't have to worry too much. He's got enough distraction and enough destruction that he can keep us sidetracked. Anybody heard of Fiona? And we're watching mesmerized and we're kind of distracted and we're, we're making sure that our friends are safe and we're texting and we're awaiting feedback and we're awaiting people to let us know. But there's all kinds of, we can, we can have unlimited distraction and if the enemy can just keep us distracted from purpose... If he can just keep, you know what, we'll, we'll just keep the church in what they call the church. And, and if we can just keep it all at 71 Downing Street, then his job is pretty much finished. But I tell you, it's dangerous when the church begins to realize that a fountain has shut up, that, that something's been stopped up, that the, the enemy of our soul, he hasn't, you know, the Philistines shut up the wells. They would put blockages in and they would, they would kind of fill them up. But sometimes you've got to get in there and you've got to dig again the wells. You've got to get the wells cleaned out because there's something ready to be released. It's not supposed to be enclosed. It's not supposed to be just here. It's supposed to go with us into the workplace. It's supposed to go with us into our community. It's supposed to follow us when we go to the shopping mart. It's supposed to follow us when we end up at Walmart or when we're getting our car fixed or wherever we may find ourselves. There's some, something that's supposed to go with us. It's supposed to get out. I don't want the church to be enclosed. I, I don't think that the spirit should ever be sealed up. I don't think it should just kind of show up on Sunday and leave by the time we get home. I want the spirit to begin to flow into every element and area of our walk with life. But it happens. It, it happens sometimes. Life has a way of closing in on us. The enemy has a way of shutting up the spring that that how did they know it was a spring and how did they know it was a fountain because at one point it was flowing but now just kind of the obstacles of life can crowd and the obstacles of life can shut down the flow and sometimes we just we just end up sitting staring in the mirror and say what happened where, where, how did we get here from there because it was a well of living water springing up it happens with humanity. Jeremiah talked about it. Jeremiah said that my people have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters for cisterns. He said they dug out cisterns and they picked the cistern over the living well of water. Because that can happen in life. We can choose the wrong substance. We can choose the wrong flow. We can choose the wrong source. And sometimes we've got to stand and look at ourselves in the mirror and say, how did I get here? I picked somewhere along the line. I, I picked the wrong thing. I got the wrong source. I, I got connected to the wrong. And now I've got a broken cistern. And I just remember at one point in my life, there was a well of springing water. I, at one point in my life, there was something, a living water that was flowing. And, and we just got to remind ourselves. And when that reminder comes, we got to say, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear out the well. There's some of the scripture elements that get lost because we've got it so good now. We've got water towers. So the power can go out and we still got water. We got people that look after that for us. Thank you, Rick Larley. It's all right. Never have I gone to the tap and said, now I wonder if this is going to work. Every time. We don't have to worry about it. But can I remind us that in life, there are times when things get shut up and they get sealed up. And, and it's time 
I, I feel something stirring in the supernatural that it's just time to start letting things break out. It's time for, for the well to spring up. It's time for, for the fountain that was sealed to be opened up. It's, it's time, come on, it's time for the garden that's been enclosed to be opened up. It's time, it's, it's time. We're in the end time and now it's the time for this thing to begin to flow. Would you just pray into that for a moment? I think we, we might begin to where somebody is living right now and the Holy Ghost is wanting to remind you it's time to let the well spring up. Spring up a well. Would you make that your prayer? Let it spring up. God, let it flow out in my life. Let it flow out into the people around me. Let it flow out. God, let there be such a, a flow that it can't be ignored, that it's got to be addressed. God, let, let the spring of living water spring up in our spirit today. In your name, God, in your name. In that song of Solomon, he says that thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits and campfire and spikenard and spikenard and saffron and calamus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloe and with all of the chief spices. What is he saying? He, he's saying that this garden is fruitful. This garden is ready. There's a world that's waiting, and this garden, this enclosed garden is just waiting to be released. This enclosed garden is just waiting to flow out, that it's been pent up long enough. It's about time. for It's, it's, a, it's ready. It's available. It's, come on, it's not lacking. It's not missing. There is something that's ready to begin to flow into our world. I, I want it to flow. I want it to be released. He goes on. He says, a fountain of gardens a well of living waters and streams from Lebanon. And all of this abundance is sitting in neutral, waiting for someone to put it in drive. All of this blessing is bound up in the garden, and it's just waiting to be released to a world that wants it and needs it. All of this multitude and manifold goodness is left unused. And there is a church that's saying it's about time. Get ready, because we're knocking the walls down. The wall, come on. The walls aren't just safety. The walls are there to kind of get knocked down so we can release what we've got to the world that needs it. I, I don't want the abundance to sit idle. I don't want the blessing to be all bound up. I, I don't want the goodness to be unused. Let's time, it's about time to release it to a world that's needed. Wall, we've still got time. Let it out. Let it out. All of these plants, the orchard, the pleasant heaven. Anyone ever stood downwind of a lilac tree? Or apple blossom tree? It gets your attention. It's just, where's that? It smells better than any perfume. It smells better than any cologne. Well, way better than any cologne. So the scripture speaks about this bride and what she possesses and what's waiting to be released but then in verse 16 the call comes it says awake O north wind and come thou south blow upon my garden that the spices thereof may flow out let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits the season has come for this to flow out the season has come for outpouring. So the scripture calls for the wind to awake, the north wind and the south wind to blow. I like to call for the wind to wake up today. Now I know that it's maybe not the best day. If you're watching with us from the Atlantic region, I, we genuinely have been concerned for all of you and praying for you. But if there was ever a time when we can see the power of the wind, it's today. While the headlines are still fresh in our minds, while the pictures are still burned fresh in our, you know, those images are still stuck right there. Can we just remind ourselves about the power of the wind and that if we will release the wind, then something substantial can happen. If we will release the wind, then, then something powerful can take place. If we, will just, if we will just let our cry become, awake, O north wind, and come thou south, blow upon our garden. Let, let it begin to flow out into our community. Let it begin to flow out into our city. Let it begin to flow out into our nation. Because we need... This garden to flow into our world. The wind is blowing again. We used to sing it, didn't we? 
The wind is blowing again, just like the day of Pentecost. The wind is blowing again. So no wonder Solomon said, Awake, O north wind, and come thou south. A lot like here in the Mediterranean, the north wind is said to bring the storm. Anyone heard of the nor'easter? Don't even have to go any further. But the wind, it says that the north wind is said to bring the rain. Ezekiel spoke of a windstorm coming out of the north accompanied by brilliant flashes of lightning. Ezekiel 1 and 4. The north and the south wind appear to go round and round in unending course. Ecclesiastes 1 and 6, it says, The wind goeth toward the south and turneth about unto the north, and it whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. So this wind is beginning to blow. And when the church calls for the wind to wake up, there is something that we set in motion. There is something that we release. There is something that is resident in the room, that when that becomes our prayer, when we begin to say, God, not just here, but there. God, would you let this storm wind of the Holy Ghost blow from the north to the south without exception, nobody left out. The wind, it touches everybody in its path. There isn't anyone that say, the, well, uh, the wind blew through here, but it didn't touch me. We only have to look at our yards right now to realize the wind touched everything. I, mean, I said to myself this afternoon, I really should take two minutes to go out and pick everything up and put it back in place. Or 10 minutes or 20 minutes or two hours or whatever it would take. I really should pull the, somebody else's tarp out of my hedge. Because the wind didn't have any discretion. It didn't, didn't kind of pick this house, not that house. It, it just kind of... Can I just remind us that if we begin to call and say, God, let the wind begin to blow, that there is something that God is going to release into our world. If we, with determination, say, God, what we've got, we don't want it to stay here. We don't want it enclosed. We want to touch in our neighborhood, in our city. God, we want to touch in our world. We need the wind of the Holy Ghost to blow. Come on, from the north to the south to the east and to the west. I say, let it blow. Would you echo that this morning, this evening? Let it blow. That wind has a purpose to accomplish. We can come back to the music. It doesn't just happen one time in the systems of nature. It's that cycle. It's a schedule. It's, it's the, the same in the supernatural that when we, when we begin to call it into being, that it begins to flow from the north to the south and turns around and comes back. And if our prayer is that what's on the inside will get to the outside, there is no telling what could happen in our world. Awake. Oh, north wind. Can I, can I just tell you that, that how God doesn't work in just coincidence? This, this, this past weekend, we, we've been working for two years to try and get Pastor Benji Terabi here and, and, and get that, that conference underway, the Filipino conference. And to get that in our calendar, we put it off one year and then we put it off another year. And finally, we settled on this, this, this past week to to start on Thursday night. So if you just think that this is just, you know, collision of circumstances, that's not what it is. There is a greater force at work. There is a wind that's releasing something in the supernatural realm. Let, let, let's just take a minute and example, uh, a few examples of this past weekend. First, the timing of the conference uh, wasn't one that we would pick. But we do have to, you know, we do like to pace out the events in our calendar. We don't like to cram everything in September. But we did. However, when you're working with three different calendars, when you're working with CCC's calendar and you're working with the multicultural uh, uh, calendar for, for the Atlantic District and you're working with the Filipino ministry's calendar, then you kind of get together and you say, well, what date is going to work? And you kind of say, well, that's the only date that will work. Let's go with that. And so you go with what you got. And so September 22 to 24. And so when we planned September 22 to 24, no one planned on Brother and Sister Mallory being here for this conference. That wasn't in the calendar. No one organized that. They called us and said, we plan on being here during these dates. Is it okay if we come? So we said, we think it would be great if you came. And so now we have CCC's calendar and the Filipino calendar 
conference calendar and the multicultural conference calendar all in alignment. And then Brother and Sister Mallory's calendar, all of a sudden it comes in alignment. And now we've got four calendars working in conjunction on one day. But it's just coincidence. And so Brother Mallory, when he came, he didn't even know that he was going to be speaking at that conference. But we're not dumb. So after he was with us on Friday, he came back to be with the conference and he spoke on Friday morning. So one week later and, and brother Mallory had already spoken Friday night service with CCC about what God, he believed that God was going to do in our city, in our church. And he begins to talk to the conference in session about what he believes God can do and how we're supposed to uh, be able to reach into different communities and people groups and how we can, can be God's hand in our world. And, and he just gives us some great insight. And so now we've got Pastor Benji and he's preaching and Brother Mallory's teaching and we got Pastor Raymar and he's, he's, they're all, they've all, and they've already had connections from decades ago. But it's not just coincidence. And then you have Kathy and I who have been lamenting the absence of Filipinos in our congregation since we were with the Ramoses in Calgary this past June. And so we got this kind of... Then we've got a couple that just happened to arrive here in the last two weeks, Roby and a, Rob and Athena. They get here in the past two weeks and then their friend Joji happens to be with them. She came down from Mirashi City to be with them this weekend and they got invited to the conference. And they came in the back door of there and sat in this center left section. And, and partway through the service, yesterday morning, Rob turns to those two ladies that are with him and said, you need to be baptized. Not what the preacher said and not what everyone else said. We get into the altar call and we get word that there's going to be a baptism. So we sell her but it's all just coincidence, right? They just happened to be invited to the service. Brother Raymar invited them. And, and then we find out that they've been waiting to be baptized for years. And so we baptized them. We can throw the picture up. And so we baptize them in Jesus' name. And would you just pause and take a look at that? Now, Joji's husband, Jonathan, wasn't here yesterday. And so when they texted him pictures of them being baptized he said why didn't you wait for me and so this morning wait wait let me back up so we finished the conference yesterday you can leave the picture there so we finished the conference yesterday and everybody may be just a little bit weary and we were with the Mallory's yesterday afternoon and we grabbed some tea and after we finished having tea we said, what are you guys doing? They said, oh, we're going to the Filipino grocery store. We're going to see if we can connect with some people over there. And we said, well, we're going home. <laughs> Don't you love missionaries who won't stop being missionaries? And we get this text message yesterday at 4.41 p.m. The owners of the store are coming to church tomorrow. And it just so happens that those store owners have been connected to this couple. And they've been connected with them in Miramichi. And when we chatted with them this morning over here, they said, how long has this church been here? And I said, I'm sorry, we've been here 60 years. And she said, we didn't know. A garden enclosed? Maybe. But can I tell you that the doors are open and the wind is blowing and something supernatural is happening. 
And so in the service, that, that couple comes, Jonathan comes, and he, he comes from this side over here. And, and before we're finished service, we find out he wants to be baptized in Jesus' name. And I just count seven members of the Filipino community in our, in our province were in our service this morning. And if you think that, that that's something powerful, it is. And it's just the beginning because God is letting the wind of the Holy Ghost blow. And we're not going to hold it in. We're not going to restrict it. God is doing a new thing. And we're ready for him to do it. So she tells us, she said, we're, we're making this our church. Our church is your church. Our church is your church. I just want, can we get that word out for a moment? Can we remind everybody, our church is your church. No matter when you get here, no matter where you came from, our church is your church. Welcome home. That's what I told her. I said, welcome home. Welcome to CCC. This is your home. The wind is still blowing. Could you stand together with me? As a matter of fact, if you just join me in the altar, because I'm I would just like to pray that God would pour his spirit out. I wonder if we can season, come on, if we can season the environment. If God, if we could just kind of say, God, whatever doors are up in our spirit, whatever doors are up in our mind, whatever doors are up, whatever walls we've erected and we didn't intentionally erect, God, whatever the enemy brought in. I just, I just come on, there's something powerful that God is beginning to do. And I I know that this church wants to be a part of it. I I know that you're feeling in the Holy Ghost what God is rising in the spirit Isaiah 43 5 fear not for I am with thee I will bring thy seed from the east I will gather thee from the west I will say to the north give up and to the south keep not back bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth no matter where someone has come from when God brings them to our city it's because we have been praying that scripture for a good long time and so when they show up be sure that we are going to welcome them with open arms welcome home this is what we believe I feel the Holy Ghost right now this is what we believe that God God has us here for this is why we believe that God has this building prepared this is why we believe God has 50 acres out back we aren't finished yet I'm believing that God is gonna fill our building and it may not be all people that look like us but believe me we are ready to open the doors and say God let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow blow from the north to the south but bring back souls that are hungry bring back souls that are thirsty we're believing God is going to do that he is going to pour his spirit out on all flesh. Would you find someone to pray with? Come on, someone just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray that God would anoint. Pray that God would appoint. Pray that God would ordain meetings. Pray that God would, God would kind of just connect us in the path of someone. God, let me be pushed by the wind of the Holy Ghost. Come on, from the front to the back, find someone to pray with. Find someone to pray with. Just join together. We're going to pray in the Holy Ghost that God would use every heart, every life. Come on, no one's excluded. Everybody's a voice. Everybody's a light in the midst of darkness. Every life is valuable. Every heart. Come on, just pray. Pray. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. God, would you do it? It's rising. Come on, don't be ashamed. Someone just get a little bit of boldness in your spirit. Let the rafters ring with the prayer. God, send revival. Spring up, oh well. It's rising, it's rising. I hear it. God's bringing people to your mind right now. God's anointing you for service. God's appointing you right now. Come on, dust off the Bible study chart. Get ready.
Get ready. Would you pray in the Holy Ghost if you've got that, that gift? Would you begin to pray? Come on, lift your voice. Lift your head. Lift your hands. I speak victory. Every enemy. Every enemy. 